One of these men is Gershon Collier, ambassador to the United Nations. What is your name, please? My name is Gershon Collier. My name is Gershon Collier. My name is Gershon Collier. Only one of these men is the real Gershon Collier. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, star of My Fair Lady Margot Moser, Johnny Carson, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again to Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Bob. Margo, Hi, welcome Hi. back. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, would you kindly open your uh, envelopes, take out your affidavit cards for the first time tonight, and follow along as I read from this first one. I, Gershon Collier, was born and raised in the city of Freetown in Sierra Leone on the west coast of Africa. My country was a British colony, and for many years I was in the vanguard of our fight for independence. In April of this year, Sierra Leone was declared an independent nation in the British Commonwealth, and on September 27th was admitted to the United Nations as its 100th member. I am the permanent representative and ambassador to the United Nations from Sierra Leone. Signed, Gershon Collier. All set, gentlemen? Quite comfortable and everything? Okay, you heard them all before they came down the flight of steps panel, claiming to be Gershon Collier, ambassador to the United Nations. Let's begin this first round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Oh, thank you, bud. Um, um, Mr. Collier, uh, number one, uh, who is Marietta Tree? Pardon? Number two, who is Marietta Tree? Uh, number three, can you tell me who represented the Queen when Sierra Leone got her independence? Sir Charles uh, uh, Dorman. And uh, number two, what lady represented the Queen? I saw wonderful pictures of her dancing. The sister of the Queen. Uh, number one, actually, how large is Sierra Leone? 28,000 miles. 28,000 miles. And what is the capital, number two? Freetown. Freetown, is this in the center of Sierra Leone? It's on the west coast of the Atlantic. Thank you. Tom Poston. Thank you, Bud. I guess I better not ask any technical questions about United Nations participation and how come they didn't condemn Russia for uh, <laughs> dropping so many bombs and a few embarrassing things like that. I'd be perfectly willing if you want to <laughs> condemn America for dropping a little bombs around too, but... Uh, I think you ought to get in a little dig there at the Russians for dropping all those things. Number three, who is Marietta Tree, I'll ask. Uh, I, I don't know Marietta Tree. Me either, number three. <laughs> <laughs> number two, where is Dakar in relation to uh, Sierra Leone, please? <clears throat> Dakar is on the southwest part of Africa. And where is Sierra Leone in relation to the... It's on the west coast of Africa, on the northern part Guinea, and on the southern part of Liberia. Thank you. How, where does that place in relation, number one, where does that place in relation to Marrakech? I don't know Marrakech. Don't know Marrakech at all? Uh, Marietta Cash. Marietta <laughs> Tree Cash. Margot. Money tree. Um, number two, between what countries uh, is Sierra Leone? Sierra Leone. <clears throat> On the southern part of Sierra, of Sierra Leone, we have Liberia. And on the northern side of it, going towards the Atlantic, we have Guinea, which was French. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing on the other side. <laughs> North, south, east. How many years was uh, uh, Sierra Leone a British colony? Number, number three, I'm sorry, number three. Uh, 200 years. 200 years. <laughs> number one. How many African nations are there in the UN now? Um, 23. 23? Are you the 23rd? Yes. Oh, that's marvelous. Congratulations. Johnny. Uh, number two, Mr. Ambassador, is that the correct uh, 
protocol, Mr. Ambassador? I, right. I don't know much about uh, royalty. No. <laughs> I know Count Basie and Duke Ellington, but I don't. <laughs> Number two, who was the first Secretary General of the United Nations? Trigrilly. Uh Number three, who preceded the, Do the late Dog Hammarskjöld as Secretary General? There, there was no uh, Secretary General before Trigrilly. The UN did not exist. Uh, number one, who succeeded, who preceded Doug Hammarskjöld? Trig Vili. Trig Vili. Uh, well, that's it. There, we leave it for now, but we get right to the business of marking our ballots, if you will, please do so. No further time for questions, and without consultation, will you vote now for number one, number two, or number three? As is customary, the team of challengers will receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. Oh, I can't. Wait a minute. Gosh, they're, they're really baffled. Oh, it's not. It hurt, all of them. Ballot oh. all marked. Everybody okay. Tom, for whom did you vote? Uh, I, I finally voted for number one. I think he had such a, a <laughs> charm of manner and poise that could see a man through what must have been a difficult uh, few years there trying to win independence for his country. And uh, he had the equanimity to see it through. Margot, which one did you select? Well, I voted for number one also, but uh, for only the reason that I didn't detect as pronounced an accent in the other two as I did with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, Johnny. Uh, I'll be very honest. I have absolutely no idea who it is, as <laughs> I didn't last week. I, but I'll, I'll, I'll vote for number two just out of sheer panic. Number two. <laughs> okay, Kitty. I voted for number three. Um, Marietta Tree is uh, one of our representatives to the UN, and I'm surprised that none of these gentlemen knew her. Uh, and number two said that the Queen's sister represented the country, and I think it was the Duchess of Kent. So I voted for number three. All right, there we have it now. The die is cast. Tom and Margot voted for number one, Johnny for number two, and Kitty for number three. Let's see how right or wrong we may be as we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real ambassador to the United Nations from Sierra Leone. Will the real Gershon Collier please stand up? <laughs> Thank you, sir, very much. Pleasure to have you on our show tonight. Now, if uh, we detect something about the other two, number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Malcolm Jackson. I am a native of the Virgin Islands, and I'm on the staff of the New York State Division of Housing. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and number three, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Dr. Randolph Chase. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> I am presently the chief resident of medicine of the NYU divisions at Bellevue Hospital. Thank you, sir. Well, we check our score. We find <laughs> that there were two of you who managed to sneak a vote or two away from the panel for a total at two of them, at $250 each, for a total of $500 from uh, uh, Salem Cigarettes. And I think you'll agree, Doctor, that's not a bad fee for an evening's entertainment. Say, say Bud. <laughs> yes. Wasn't uh, Dr. Chase, didn't you put on an accent? I'm sure he put on a little one. Yeah, so he's part actor so. as well. May as I ask a question? Yes. When was Paul Henri Spock head of the UN? Hello, Spock. Spock. Paul. He had never been. It was never there. there. Sixty January. No, he wrote the book about child behavior and racism. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> gentlemen, you also receive as well as the five hundred dollars from Salem cigarettes a carton of Salem's, and I hope you've had a pleasant evening visiting us. It's been a great Thank treat you. for us. Good night. Thank yeah. you for coming. Time, I think you'll agree, is a time of discovery. And if you'd like to come along, you will see how delightfully refreshing it can be. Finally, may I present our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Doris Libel. My name is Doris Libel. My name is Doris Libel. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? 
I, Doris Libel, along with my husband, own and operate a rabbit ranch. We started with a pair of Easter bunnies and now have 250 top grade animals. I am also a licensed rabbit judge authorized by the American Rabbit Breeders Association to judge any of the two dozen breeds at rabbit shows throughout the nation. I am one of only two licensed lady rabbit judges in the country. Signed, Doris Libel. Ladies, get yourself comfortably seated and ready to play our game. All set? Okay. Panel, you heard these three ladies all claiming to be Doris Libel, <coughs> rabbit breeder, and let us start this round of questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Uh, uh, Mrs. Libel, number one, how does one distinguish between a rabbit and a hare? <laughs> Well, um, at the time of birth, the hair is, uh, the young are born uh, with hair on, H-I-A-I-R, and the eyes are open. The rabbit is born naked with the eyes shut. Thank you. Number two, uh, Mrs. Libel, <laughs> how are uh, <laughs> rabbit's teeth different as opposed to other rodents? As opposed to other rodents? To rodents, yes. Uh, they are not quite as sharp as rats, but they are approximately the same, not too much difference. Number three, do you agree with that completely? Uh, no, the, um, the rabbit has two incisor teeth, and the rodent doesn't. Num thank you. Margot. Uh, number one, what's a Dutch bunny? Well, a Dutch bunny denotes a breed of rabbit, and... I imagine a bunny would be a young one, so it would be a young Dutch rabbit. Number three, uh, what's a Dutch bunny? I wouldn't know any different from number one on that. <laughs> maybe, maybe I got the wrong name. It's a Belgian hare with bad digestion. <laughs> Number two. It's very funny. How long have you been judging uh, rabbit um, uh, contests or uh, association things? Not very long. I've just been breeding rabbits for about five years. And uh, you... Okay. Johnny. Johnny? Um, breeder number one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the proper uh, way to do it. Yes, uh, Johnny. What Easter was this? Uh, how long uh, ago? What Easter was what? Uh, what was the question on that? Uh, what is the number one again? I'll, I'll rephrase it. What, what, what is the gestation period uh, for, for a rabbit? 31 days. Uh, how many litters do they have a year? Oh, four to five. Mm -hmm. no, number two, how do you judge a rabbit? Well, what do you judge him on? Well, there are various things that you judge. Um, first of all, it's the body balance in general, the bone structure, their teeth, the clarity of their eyes. Uh -huh. Thank you. Number Kitty. three, what is tulare? Hey, pardon? Tulare number one. What is tulare? Uh, something to do with right. tularemia, I would imagine. Number two, mm -hmm. what is psittacosis? <laughs> it, <laughs> it's a disease that... Rabbit says. Number three, what is the lo longest haired rabbit? The Angora. Number. There we leave it, I'm afraid. <laughs> rabbits to the right of us, rabbits to the left of us, into the valley of rabbits. Charge the 600. Mark your ballots, if you will, please, without consultation. And vote as you do for number one, number two, <laughs> or number three. <laughs> <laughs> You gave up? All bunnies, Mark? I, I don't know. Okay. You got your ballot marked yet, uh, Tom? No. Gosh, <laughs> no. But, oh, I'll, I'll Grab take it yeah, by the ears I'll take and let's it. have it. I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll vote. For Which you. one did you select, Tom? I selected number three. Uh, she, she gave uh, hmm. a, a reasonably accurate answer to the question about the teeth. That's how rabbits, are dis rabbits and hares and packers are distinguished from rodents. With the two sets of... Well, how about that? Margot. Well, <laughs> I voted for number three, too, because of the, the teeth answer. Johnny? I, number one had all the answers. Uh, I hate to split hairs, but I'm voting for... Uh, I'm going to vote for number three because she looks like my grandmother. <laughs> okay. Kitty. I voted for number one. 
Um, number one knew about tularemia, which I think is a rabbit's disease, and number three said that she agreed with number one when she said something about, was it the, the Dutch bunny? The Dutch bunny? The <laughs> what tea? is the Dutch bunny? Anyway, how do you know so much about rats? Well, I want one, and I want one <laughs> He used to dance the bunny hug, that's why, you know. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, bud. A couple of weeks ago, the guy that draws Mark Trail yeah. had a, a Sunday uh, comic strip on rabbits and hares, and, and, and uh, that's how I... You never know how you get your knowledge, do you? All right, let's find out how right or wrong we may be. Three for one and one for one, and there we go. And, and as we discover which one is the real rabbit reader extraordinary. So will the real Doris Leibel please stand up? <laughs> and well done. You fooled the panel completely there, Challenges. You did all right. Uh, number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Sally MacArthur. I'm a concert pianist. <laughs> Are you giving a concert in the near future? Yes, as a matter of fact, November 8th, Wednesday evening at Judson Hall here in New York. Well, best of good luck to you. Thank you so much. Number three, your real name and what you really do, please. My name is Alice Giovelli. I am a retired librarian and grandmother of 12. And you got most of the vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that means, of course, you did very well this evening because there were three incorrect votes at $250 each. Not bad, ladies. $750 total from Salem and a card in Salem for each of you. Thank you so much. If you had fun, we did too. Good night. <laughs> you know, some cameramen can take outdoor movies so realistic and so uh, genuine, you can almost feel the fresh, soft air, like this one coming up. All right, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Burton Mason. My name is Burton Mason. My name is Burton Mason. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copy of this third affidavit for tonight? I, Burton Mason, am a diver and salvage expert. For the past year, I have been trying unsuccessfully to raise a German submarine which was sunk off the coast of Rhode Island in 1945. My disappointment at the failure of this venture vanished when, in September, I found the hulk of the United States freighter Oregon. The Oregon was sunk in a collision with the battleship New Mexico three days after Pearl Harbor. The Oregon was carrying a cargo of wool. At today's prices, this wool, which we expect to salvage from the Oregon, is worth approximately three million dollars. Signed, Burton Mason. <laughs> all set, challengers? All right, then uh, you heard these three gentlemen all claiming to be Burton Mason, salvage expert, and we will start this round with Marco Moser. Marco? Um, number one, how did you happen to find the submarine that was sunk off the coast? Well, we found this uh, with a uh, narrow service mag magnometer. Number two, are, are you with a, a firm, a private firm that raises uh, uh, submerged vessels? Uh, yeah, a firm of one. <laughs> you. <laughs> Plus friends. <laughs> I see. Uh, number three, um, why did you want to raise the submarine? Why? Well, mostly for historical value, and possibly there's stories of so-called fabulous treasure aboard the submarine. It was the... Shall I continue? Johnny. Well, I'm going to eliminate number two, because he looks like the commander of the German sub. So... <laughs> 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 right on. Uh, Maybe that's how it happened. Uh, he yeah. knows that's why he wanted to get it up, John. Uh, it <laughs> number... Number one, what was the name of the, uh, the German submarine? Did you know well, the name of it? Well, no, it didn't have a name. It was uh, just a number, U-853. Uh, number three, uh, how many fathoms uh, does the uh, Oregon, uh, in how many fathoms of water does it, does it lie? 100 fathoms. How do you, do you plan to raise it or to take the, uh, the wool off of the vessel? No, we're not planning to raise it. It has no salvage value as steel itself, but the wool, we intend to take the wool off. I see. Uh, number one, 
Uh, do, you, do, you, do you dive with, with a helmet? Is, you don't no, not that's, scuba uh, diving, is it? No, uh, that's hard hats. Uh, we dive with scuba. You dive, do dive with scuba? Kitty. Number two, uh, give me in terms of feet, fathoms. 100 fathoms, how many feet? 600. 600 feet. Number three, when you get this wool up, how long will it take you to dry it out? How long will it take us to dry it out? Well, you can't tell it wet, can you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but the wool itself will be virtually dry because it'll be encapsulated in its own lanolin. Oh, thank you. Number one, what are the laws of salvage? How much do you get out of it? Do you get 100% of what you bring up? Uh, negative. I, uh, well, I have several other people that are with me, but I do but not I mean, get 100%. The, the, the... In general, you, huh? Well, 10% of the value of the cargo will go to the insurance company, of course. Goes to the insurance company? Yes. What goes to the company who lost the boat? The company that lost the boat has nothing to do with it. They have been paid off already. Number two, when, when you... Oh, it's a fascinating story. Ah. There's so many questions. <laughs> yeah. Makes you want to knit, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to know how come the, the New Mexico ran into the, the United States freighter Oregon. Did the Japs manage to get a pilot aboard or something? <laughs> Three days after Pearl Harbor, it went out of the thing safe and sank an American ship? How'd that happen? Are you asking me? I'd like to ask you number one. <laughs> well, uh, as you know, in 1941, there was no radar aboard either, either the New Mexico or the Oregon. This caused a collision. It was heavy fog. Thank you. Uh, number two, do you, are you going to hold still for that business about the lanolin keeping the wool dry inside there? You go along with that, number two. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, lanolin... Well, there we are. Once again, we've come to the end of our wool. So if you don't mind marking your ballots, please do so right now. Write in pure lanolin, if you will. And without consultation, <laughs> mark your ballots for number one, number two. What are they doing to us tonight? Or number three. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, tonight is really terrible. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here we go. Mark the wet wool, please. <laughs> Ah, what the heck? There we go. Everybody mark? Johnny, you've already marked? Okay. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number three, bud, because his voice sounds like the kind of a voice that comes out of the headset in a diver. <laughs> <laughs> Margo, for whom? Well, I voted for number two, but as I reconsider, I wonder, is it you can't wear a beard when you dive? Why not? I don't What's the matter with it? Two. It's covered with lanolin. It doesn't get wet. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> oh, oh. But lanolin sounds better than sheep fat. Yes. <laughs> I, I voted for number three. Number one said they did scuba and, and, and 100 fathoms. That, that, that's kind of, I would say, kind of deep for scuba. I voted for number three. Kitty. I voted for number one. He's the only one that looks healthy enough to go down that <laughs> <laughs> find out how right or wrong we voted <laughs> as we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real salvage expert. So, will the real Burton Mason please stand up? <laughs> no, I'm not healthy, huh? <laughs> Oh, no wonder he knew so much about wet wool, you see. Number one, could you tell us your real name, you healthy one, and what you really do? Well, my real name is Jim Hutchinson. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I'm a sergeant in the U.S. Air Force. Bless you, sir. <laughs> Pleasure to have you with us. And number three, your real name. You got the most votes. What do you do? My name is Eli Gaynor, and I'm the owner-operator of the Triple Lake Dude Ranch in Succasana, New Jersey. <laughs> There's only one correct. That means, again, for the second time tonight, three incorrect at $250 each. Grand total, $750 from Salem, gentlemen. Hope that makes you happy, as well as the carton of Salem's, which you will receive on the way out. Thanks for being with us. Good night, and the very best of good luck to you. Kitty, uh, you have a question to ask? I know why number two didn't look healthy. He's suffering from the rapture of the deep. <laughs> I wonder why that didn't come in earlier. <laughs> now that's all the time we have for tonight. It's been fun, panel. At least I've enjoyed it, and I hope you have. Indeed. Good night. Good, good night, night Bud. Bud Collier saying good night from Salem Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production.